Ready to go. Sweet. So welcome to this Hangout. This is the Places API Hangout. I uh, am Luke May, and this is Justin. Justin is one of our PMs down here in Sydney on the Places team. Justin, yeah. why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, thank you, Luke. I was uh, born and raised in the States, New Jersey, moved out to California to go to university. And I started off my Google career uh, last October at YouTube, working on a bunch of partner stuff. Um, but thankfully, I've been lucky enough to uh, come down to this gorgeous city of Sydney, Australia, and work with the GeoDeveloper team and the Maps API team of Loop as well. Yes. So we've got a special day today with, with the Places API. We're going to talk about a couple of things which we're launching very soon. Yep. Um, and then you know, maybe some stuff that's coming down in the future. Absolutely. So what have we got to show people today? Sure. So today I'd like to talk about a couple new things that you just said, uh, one of which we call the JavaScript um, autocomplete data services. And though that name is quite a uh, mouthful, it's actually quite a straightforward, uh, awesome feature that we, we have. So today in the JavaScript library, um, you have to bind a input field to some widget for you to actually get the autocomplete functionality. Um, that's pretty cool and fun. And, you know, it's pretty simple. So that a lot of developers, they want a quick, easy fix snap that thing around to the application and get some autocomplete functionality. But obviously, Google developers, externally and internally, are, you know, they want some more flexibility and freedom. And so with this uh, JSON collection from the data service, you can style your predictions in more uh, feature-rich ways. And you can also add in your own predictions as well. So one use case, actually, that Google uses themselves in the Maps application is to um, put in your home address uh, with your directions. So you can imagine different location-based applications, start locations or important locations or things that you need to know and to have in your prediction list. You can stick them right in there with, alongside our predictions as well. Cool. We actually have a demo of this. Awesome. So here we go. So here we go. Do you want to have a play with your demo? Sure, exactly. So this demo is actually just uh, to showcase some uh, the styling things that we can do today. So with this new uh, data service, you can do things like uh, actually add different types of colorful flair that match your application's themes. Um, this one, for example, is based on the Google colors. Uh, the fun thing here is that you can actually, it actually rotates through the different colors through our logo. Um, but you can do much stronger things here, too, involving pretty CSS and styling that I know nothing about and you're very, very good at. <laughs> um, so hopefully we get some cool demos up in the future. Yeah, here we're just doing some cool things by changing the color, the bold color to different. You know, exactly. Different interesting colors to highlight what was typed. For sure, yeah. Yeah. Cool. So right. what, what else have we got down, coming out soon? Yeah, so um, this one's super exciting. It's We call it the Query Autocomplete. And so uh, when the Places API launched last year, the, the autocomplete functionality was one of the most differentiating, um, powerful traits we had as part of the service, right? Yeah, I remember you could do cool stuff like just start typing in where you live and it completed your home address. Exactly, pretty neat. It was and so, so useful. I remember like the previous uh, PM uh, Tor was obsessed with making this like the standard for everybody. He never wanted to ever type his address again. He wanted to type the first letter and then have all the forms in the web complete everything for him. Yeah, that's a perfect world, yeah. definitely. And uh, we're slowly getting there. I mean, there's more and more people that are using this service for sure. Um, we also know that it's not complete. Uh, we were missing one big thing. And we're also, one, that one big thing, um, we're happy to say we're including today. Uh, sorry, not today, very soon. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, it is going to be popular queries. So you can actually imagine taking some of the magic of that really cool, awesome search box from apps.google.com and putting that within your own application. So now, today, instead of saying things like points of interest, which like Starbucks or addresses like 48 Parama Road, you can actually um, include popular queries, like Italian restaurants, like coffee shops inside the actual search box themselves, and things will be auto-completed there. That's cool, but I don't believe you, so let's see a demo. <laughs> cool. So this is the gorgeous city of Sydney, Australia. Um, I'm going to type in one of the uh, queries I have planned. It's Italian <laughs> restaurants. As you can see, that um, rows three, sorry, two through five actually have um, places and geographic locations. Um, but the first one that was auto-completed was actually a query, Italian restaurants. In case you don't believe me, Luke, come up with something random. What's a random query we can Ooh, think about? French restaurants. French? No way. Oh. oh, let's see if we can do it. I see France coming up in food. French. Let's see. Oh, restaurant right oh. there. And you only had to type in half of it. 
Exactly. Now that is what I call good UX. I know you've you've made my day. And my stuff. Oh my god. Together, <laughs> <laughs> two days are made. But yeah. So as you can see, this demo, which was obviously made by Luke and Co. Um, you can get cool queries and use them with alongside other services like text search and things like that to get uh, points of interest on your map. Yeah, the very famous one is pizza in New York. Mm. You, are, you actually want to search for pizza places in New York, not just the places that have New York pizza in their name. Oh, really? Yeah. And how, how is the pizza here in Sydney? Not as good as New Not York. Not as good. You would say, you would say so? so I, I would say so from personal experience. So what's the pride to enjoy then? What would be pizza in New York? to blank in Sydney. Oh, who knows. I mean, you, you'd probably <laughs> say the traditional Aussie pie. Aussie pie. Yeah. Good. Yeah. OK. Yeah. I actually only had that a couple times. Is there yeah. something as tiger pie? I heard that. I think you're making things up. Oh, probably. Yeah. I've been having bad sources. <laughs> but uh, yeah, cool. Cool. So what are some other things that are coming down the, the pipeline for the Places API? Um, well, so two things I can call out specifically, which I'm excited about, um, one of which is very much and thanks to the people who've used our uh, issue tracker and Stack Overflow and those forums. Uh, that is, of course, business listing photos. Um, that is something we're very actively working on, and we're, we're excited to get out by the end of the year. Um, any questions for photos? No. Yeah, it's exciting, though. Yeah, it is finally, pretty cool. Look at it's finally, yeah. We're looking at, yeah. Um, next up, after, uh, around by the end of the year as well, is a thing we're going to call radar search. Um, essentially, it's you're going to be able to get up to 200 lat longs and references of places um, around a circular area. So you can imagine a nice little radar oh, yeah. coming yeah. out from you. Yeah. That's cool. Um, and so this thing here is basically like uh, a great one use case for it would be building a heat map for like a neighborhood, you know, trying to find different types of uh, avenues and venues um, around where you live. But besides that, it's a good way to showcase the, uh, the amount of and variety of places just anywhere you want. Um, it's so. It's not something about specific details for a place, but just what is the place ecosystem around me like? And I think it's really interesting um, and definitely visually, visually very, that's, very good. That's pretty cool. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of useful use cases for doing like the what's around me sort of queries. Yes, completely. And so like, a little bit longer term, um, there are two main strengths the Places API um, have that are kind of guiding its roadmap. Um, the one the first one I can call out is it's Awesome data, right? We have over 95 million points of interest, right? Um, amazing amounts of telephone numbers, opening hours, things like that that we can we can share with people. So how do we take that huge amount of data and let developers play with it more, right? Um, the specifics there are still kind of up in the air. Uh, we're still definitely designing some things out, but that's definitely a theme you want to focus on. That's cool. You know, taking that huge power of data we got, Google scale, yeah, and making it available to everybody. Um, another piece is obviously the the suite of Google products we have around us, right? Same building as us right now. We have the Maps API teams as well. Um, all the way across Pacific and California, obviously, we have the uh, Google Plus team. Um, but these are services, and they have APIs themselves that we definitely want to integrate well with, and definitely want to make you know, these summed up products you know, bigger and better than individual pieces. So if Tor wanted to see everybody using this autocomplete to type in his address, what do you want to see our developers do with the Places developers. API? Hmm. What are some cool things you want people to do? Absolutely. I think that. Right now, um, there has been. I'm really interested in seeing where the location-based application trends are going. So, for example, I thought it was really interesting that for the gaming companies um, that were used to doing just check-in-based games, commerce-like games, now it's very much actually purely a like zombie game mm -hmm. where you're actually in in the in the world, more of a virtual reality type of thing. Um, I think that not just in location-based games, but just in location-based apps, apps everywhere, travel, social networking, food and wine. There's there's a lot of room to do something above just the baseline location data. Um, but you need the best data to get the best services, right? So yeah. that's why we're here. True. It would be cool to see people actually like get the data that we provide and, and make some sense out of it and offer yeah. something more to the user than just like, hey, look at all the coffee shops around you. For sure. Yeah, yeah that's, the, that's the goal. So I mean, I don't have a specific endpoint, I guess, like, uh, like Tor mentioned. Um, but as we, as we get more and more stuff out and see more and more ideas, I, I bet I'll, I'll get some better opinions, too. Cool. Well, that was short and sweet. Do we do you have any parting words for everybody? Yeah. Um, well, first, thank you so much for hosting. Not at all. We hope we'll see you soon. Oh, definitely. And on top of that, um, please check out our Places API Challenge. It's located at um, developers.google.com slash places slash well, places slash challenge. Um, and you essentially get to build an awesome application to help your community out and possibly win a chance to go to I.O. And you get to hang out with us. Absolutely.
how, who could we turn that down? Uh -huh. So yeah, yeah exactly. But thank you guys for tuning in. Okay. Thanks, guys. <laughs>